Okay, today we'll talk about again. Pardon, I'm not quite sure. The developments in Mesopotamia uh, when we talk about the. Bugün nerede bir sürü yerde seminer vereceğim de Ankara Üniversitesi. Ay Allah. En sona biz dersimizi mi koymuşuz? Pardon. Okay. We'll talk about the. Ah, bir dakika ya. Bu, bu o da değil. Okay now. Okay. Dün epey gece, geç vakte kadar çalıştım, kafam karışmış. E açtım diyesin, de, ofiste bunu açtım. Okay. We'll talk about the uh, Mesopotamia technologies, chemical technologies. We'll talk about the use of gypsum, gypsum alçı taşı, and bitumen, zift, asphalt, salt and soda uh, used by Sumerians. Of course, when we talk about the use of various materials by Sumerians, uh, they did not start to use those materials for the first time. Chemical technologies, yes, they started many of them for the first time, like distillation, uh, extraction, etc. But the uses of natural chemicals were used, uh, many of them were used long before Sumerians. Now, gypsum was, of course, known by humans for many, many years. We don't know how far it goes back. But when we talk about uh, gypsum, uh, Sumerians called it imbar. Uh, do you know the difference between alçı taşı and alçı? Anybody knows from other courses? Very simple. Alçı taşı and alçı. Gypsum and, and plaster of Paris. Their physical properties are different. You convert uh, gypsum, the stone or mineral, by heating to plaster of Paris. Plaster of Paris, they call it plaster of Paris. Perhaps it was used, in, and may, maybe they discovered it first. I don't know when, but maybe some countries uh, ex imported it. That's why they call it plaster of Paris, but it is uh, known by even Sumerians. I don't know why it's called plaster of Paris. Now, when you heat the, the, the rock, the mineral, at around 120 to 180 degrees, you convert it to plaster of Paris. Now, gypsum, the, the rock, the mineral, contains water molecules in, the, in their structure. And uh, when heated up, you lose some of the water molecules. When we, when we talk about the crystal structures of, of some compounds, and when we talk about some molecules in the crystal structure, Now, there are some molecules in the crystal structure, and in some cases, we, have, we may have even water. In the other ones, we may have some calcium atoms, and in some of them, we have sulfate ions. Now, when we talk about water, usually we think about the liquid water. But when we talk about the water in molecule form, of course, you cannot call it a physical property. Physical property exists when it forms a, a hundreds or thousands or millions of molecules or atoms together. Therefore, you should not think of water as, as, as a liquid material. It's there, and this crystal is solid. Okay, so it, that's, why, that's why we call it crystal water, right? But when you heat it up, of course, it's not easy to remove the calcium and sulfate. Water is removed more easily. So you have some deficiency. If you lose some water, you have some deficiency. So suppose that in this corner we lost some water. Now, what did we do to lose the water? We heated up, we gave energy, right? Water is gone. S some of them are gone. Now, this crystal, this material, missing a molecule or half a molecule or two molecules, depending on how much you heat it up, wishes to gain water again, because this normal structure is to be, to be stable 
with the presence of two molecules of water or three molecules or whatever. So if you lose some of it, it desires to get some. Now, plaster of Paris is missing some water molecules compared to the original crystal. Now, if you put back water, what do you expect about energy? Do you think that it would release some heat or it would gain some water? Now, we, we heated up, we lost some water, and then we have plaster of Paris, we add water, there will be a change in the temperature. Do you think that it should give out energy or it will, it will take out energy when I add water? When the, wa when the water molecule goes back into the, into the uh, crystal? Very simple question. I, I already gave the answer. Yeah, it will give out energy because if you carry out a reaction by giving heat, and you, when you do the reverse, that energy must come out. Okay? So that, that's why it gives out heat. So when you try to fix something in your house, you take a, a, a certain amount of plaster of Paris and add water, and it, it, it, it becomes a, a, a, a partially liquid, and then you put it on, on, on the wall or whatever, it gets hot. Because by accepting the water, it becomes very happy, and it gives out the energy. It absorbed before. So this is true for all reactions, chemical reactions also. If you change the structure of a chemical compound by giving energy, in the reverse time, that energy must come out. Conservation of energy, right? Okay. Now, there is another mineral they call uh, alabaster. It is, its, its structure is quite different than the, uh, the, the, the, the molecule that we call gypsum. Uh, and it is used to make some statues like marble. And there are many small statues made out of alabaster by Sumerians or other civilizations even before. Now, when we look at the uh, alabaster, it is easy to carve so you can make some rel reliefs or, or some, some statues, but usually they prefer to use marble because marble is more, dro more durable, more, it, it's much stronger. Now, calcium sulfate mineral <coughs> loses 3.2 molecules of water and then it's left with uh, one and a half molecules of water. When we, well, I, I just made a mistake, I said uh, half a molecule, but it, it, we lose three and a half, and we have, we have uh, uh, one and a half molecule of water left in, in, in the crystal, in plaster of Paris. Now this is a statue uh, made by the Sumerians, a priest, priestess. Priestess means rahibe, uh, uh, but at the same time, Usually in Sumerian times, even in Babylonian, I think, uh, they had the temple. Uh, and the temple, they had some priests and some priestesses. Usually, the, the king used to be the head of the temple because he was the only person who could talk to God. So he said, I am the biggest priest. Therefore, he, his daughter, usually, if she, he didn't have daughter, but usually they had daughters because they had many wives, uh, one of his daughters became the priestess of the temple. So the temple was under the control of the king of Sumerians or Babylonians. Also, he, his daughter was there to keep other priests under control. This, is, this goes back to 2400 BC. Now, we talked about bitumen. I don't know if I mentioned bitumen. Bitumen is, is, is asphalt or tar or katran. Uh, does anyone know how it's produced, how it's formed? What is the difference between petroleum and tar and, and, and, and uh, gasoline or mazot, uh, the other fuels? Anybody knows how we obtain gasoline, benzene or mazot or, or, or asphalt from petroleum? Yes. Sorry? Catalytic separation of yes. uh, a petroleum product. So, uh, 
according to the changing temperatures, the materials uh, uh, found in this temperature. Range. So you take the petroleum and you heat it up. Mm -hmm. Actually, you distill, but you, you, you, in some cases, you also add a catalyst for cracking. Does anyone know what cracking is? Organic compound cracking? Cracking. <coughs> you, you have a long molecule, or many, many, many long molecules. And uh, when you heat it up in the air, you, you may burn it, right? But if you heat it up, in the absence of oxygen, if you apply too much heat, you, you boil it something else. You distill something else. But in order to crack, means if you have long molecules, of course, we have hydrogen all over. Some of the carbon bonds crack, break up, heat. causes crack, maybe here, maybe here, maybe here, or even here. So you produce much smaller molecules. That's called cracking, but it should be carried out under an atmosphere without oxygen, cracking. Because when you heat it up, these, these bonds begin to vibrate. The bond between them begins to vibrate, and if you give too much energy, they break. That's called cracking. That's how we produce all the organic compounds from petroleum. You distill, first you obtain the lowest molecular weight compounds, and then the next one, next one, and then you come to a point that you want to produce other molecules, then you crack. And then after cracking, you distill again. So that's why you use sometimes catalysis to carry out some. When they crack, they have radicals, so catalysis help them to produce some of the organic materials that the petroleum did not contain. So when you leave, when the petroleum is left under the ground for a long time, some of those uh, volatile compounds evaporate in thousands of years. So then you may find some bitumen on the ground because in th thousands of years, some of the volatile compounds are, are, are uh, already evaporated. Now. Sumerians used uh, the uh, uh, plaster of Paris and alabaster for making statues. And when they made some big statues with clay, they coated the surface of the statues with plaster of Paris. But <coughs> since plaster of Paris is white, if they wanted to make a statue and the eyes of the, the person in the statue, you need black color, black dye. Then they use bitumen. So bitumen usually uh, used in, in, in many statues and some buildings. When they construct buildings, they have bricks or stones. They added the uh, uh, bricks together or the rock, uh, rocks together by using bitumen and, and, and some sand. So they, they, they form a kind of... Uh, uh, um, how do you call it in Turkish? Harç, inşaatar. So that mortar. We see in many uh, ruins in Mesopotamia that they use bitumen, in, especially in Iraq, everywhere in Mesopotamia. And also for the statues, for the eyes, usually when they made a statue of a person, they had the head. Maybe eyes, but they did not put ears, the eyes. They, they left a uh, small hole there, and then separately, they, they made a, a spherical eye. In order to put it into the hole, they used bitumen. And then, in order to make the eyes look like eyes of a human, they had to dye black to show that the person had iris. Okay? So bitumen was used a lot in Mesopotamia for, for, for art or, or for construction everywhere. And also it was used 
for something else. Anybody knows what else it could be used? Yeah, make it water, waterproof. It's, it's a waterproofing material also. It was for centuries, thousands of years. Now, when we look at a uh, tablet, it says, ritual cup, tören kabı, her zaman dinlerde var. Hristiyanlıkta pek çok dinlerde var. Bizde pek yok yani, Biz, hatırlamıyorum. Bizde öyle bir özel iç, içecek kabı. Ritual cup coated with plaster of Paris. Clay, usually they made clay, not gold ones. And another one says, clay statue decorated with bitumen and plaster of Paris. So when they have big buildings, high quality building, palace or something important or related to government, they always use bitumen and, and plaster on, on the surfaces of the walls. They decorated it along with gold. Palaces, they also use gold. Now, there, there is a uh, Syrian king, Nebuchadnezzar. And he wrote uh, a clay tablet, or he, of course, his, his clerk wrote the book, uh, uh, the tablet. It says, its walls I overlaid with massive gold, as with gypsy man bitumen. So he decorated the walls with gold and bitumen and plaster. So the, the, the, the, the building looked very impressive to the people, because this, usually they made the palaces very impressive. Still, they do in all countries. To to impress the people, they will respect the government or the king more. If he lives in a very big building, he's different. You live in a small cottage in a village, and he lives in a giant building, so you respect him more. That's, that's the psychology of people, even today. Now, Babylonian king, again, Nabonidus. I'll, if, I, not, if I don't forget, I'll talk about Nabonidus later on. He's an he's a interesting king, Babylonian king. And in his clay tablet, he says he made his palace very impressive or splendid. And he says, I used gypsy man bitumen. See, they are always proud of using bitumen and, and, and uh, gypsum together in their palaces, in their uh, important uh, buildings. Now, this is the carving on a rock of, of Nebuchadnezzar II. He was the king Iran. 634 BC to 562 BC. Well, you can see that the, on those days, the, the sculpts were very um, uh, talented. Look at his hand. It's, it's, it's, it's, it's just like your own hand, you see? The thing, I don't know, it doesn't look very clear, but the palm and the fingers, everything is in the detail, the ear. Many people, if I tell you to draw ear, 50% will not draw it properly. Okay, this is a priest, a, a Sumerian priest, around 2900 BC. And this uh, statue was made uh, with alabaster. And as I mentioned before, his eyes were made separately and then glued into the holes of the eyeball. And then they dyed the uh, irises with black bitumen. So bitumen used as a glue or to adhere the uh, eyes into the eye, eye, eye hole, eye, eye, eyeball into the eye hole, and then they uh, use bitumen for two purposes. And this is in Metropolitan Museum of Art. Now, uh, this is a carving. I, I may have showed it be, shown it before. It's a relief from the Asurbani Pals, uh, Palace. Now, on, they are on the river. You see, the man is swimming on airbag, which is air-filled hide of an animal, okay? They blow air and then uh, they, they just uh, swim on, you see, he is blowing air into the airbag. Now, they are carrying the carriages, the war carriages, on a boat. This is a big boat. So this is just a part of the relief. It's, it's a big one. But the thing is that uh, they use, uh, they use the... Um, uh, gypsum uh, rock for carving this relief. As I said, gypsum was very easy to carve, but in some cases they use marble because of durability. 
Now, this, this is the uh, relief of, of uh, Asurbanipal. He's hunting lions. Usually, if you show this to an artist today, they, they says they made a mistake. There is a drawing mistake. Can you see that drawing mistake? On this? In many paintings of Egypt and carvings of Sumerians and Assyrians or Babylonians, they, they, they made that mistake. There is a mistake. İç Sümerlerin ok attığını filan resimleri gördünüz mü? Çok komik bir çizim yaparlar. Şey, şöyle, no, no, that's not, no, hand is properly, yes. This is correct. There is no, nothing wrong there. Hiç mi görmediniz Mısır çizimleri? Ok atanlar. Çok saçma çizilir. Now look, uh, it's, it, maybe it's difficult for you to see now, but the funny thing is that when this is the uh, bow, okay? And uh, look at the uh, string. goes in the back of his head, over here. This is not to disturb the face of the king or any person. So th they were afraid to cross the, uh, the string over here. So they put it in the back. See, it comes over here and then goes out. Uh, then it comes over here, but goes behind the man. You, you see the string here and here. And where is his hand? Oh, yeah. Yeah, his, sorry. I'm sorry. His hand is here. I'm sorry. Oh, they, they, they, they, let's see. No, that's not it. Okay, here, here. I'm sorry. I, it's much better in my um, computer now. This is the bow. This is the string. You see, go, going back. It's not, it's not going like this. And, and you see? The arrow is also behind his head. Yeah, he's, he's doing like this. Right? You see his hand? He's, he's like this. In all pictures, in, in, in uh, Egyptian drawings and all Sumerians, they do it. Well, anyway, so usually they draw the picture of king much bigger than the ordinary people and the picture of God much bigger than the kings, as I mentioned, to show their quality. Also, in, in Ottoman miniatures, the same. Sultan is bigger and the people are drawn smaller. That's, that's habit for of thousands of years, to, to, to tell the people that this person is different than the others. He's, he's much more important person. <coughs> Now, we see that gypsum was used for, for various purposes by uh, the, the artists or, or workmen. For instance, they used in leather work by leather workers, goldsmiths, silversmiths, and also used as paint base. And also it was used as a mortar, as I mentioned, for construction or for, for the, uh, for the uh, building of walls. And as I mentioned, they, they used to make it, uh, to, uh, they used to use it for, to make uh, some uh, statues. Now, as I said, in Mesopotamia, gypsum was everywhere, either in form of plaster of Paris, either in form of, of, of gypsum. But later, uh, it, uh, it was discovered that around 1800s that uh, it was a good, uh, fertilizer for farms, for farmers. And it started, I think, in the United States or England, I forgot about it. But then it, it, it spread to all over in Turkey. Now all villages know that they, they, they, use, cal they use calcium sulfate in, in their farms because it helps to grow much better of corn, cotton, wheat, and peanut farms. They, they use it as a fer fertilizer because it contains calcium and also it contains uh, sulfate, sulfur. So they are nutrition, sulfur element and calcium. Uh, some uh, crops need uh, as, as, as, as, uh, as an essential element. It also acts as a moisturizer. If, when we talked about the structure, uh, it contains uh, water molecules. Where was it? Okay, well, anyway, calcium. Sulfate, H2O. So when you have water, 
in the in the in the in the uh, alum, in the in the mineral when you put it in in uh, the farm that crystal water can go in and out so if the farm if the soil is too wet then calcium absorbs gypsum sorry absorbs some of the water but if it becomes very dry it releases some water there is a balance therefore it helps the farmer uh, to control the temp to, to control the moisture of the of the soil if if, if if he doesn't have enough water at the moment if, if he forgets to to water the farm calcium sulfate helps the farmer so that the crop does not dry or die just it it, it just the, the temp it just the amount of water moisture they also use it in uh, turbid waters just like uh, alum it gathers together the small particles of clay or small particles of, of dirt or, or small perhaps plants etc. Then the water becomes uh, uh, clearer. So in the ponds if you have some plants uh, calcium sulfate does not harm the plants. So, uh, therefore aquatic life is not, is not disturbed by the presence of gypsum. Did you ever hear that they use calcium sulfate in farms at all? Istuymadık mı? Gypsy. Okay. Now, in cosmetics. So, when the ladies buy some cosmetics, in many of them they have gypsy as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a color additive. So, then they use as a base in some paints and also cosmetics. Also, in the morning when you brush your teeth, your, your uh, toothpaste contains some uh, calcium sulfate. Uh, it's, it may be strange for you to hear that in beer factories, they use gypsum, they use calcium sulfate. Without calcium sulfate, beer does not taste good. So this story goes back to, uh, to England. You know, the British beer is very famous in the world. They have two kinds of beer. And uh, they were lucky that they had the beer factory next to a lake. They, they used to take and purify, clarify the water and use it for water, for fermentation, etc., in the beer factory. But later on, they realized that the calcium was very high in that water. It was hard water. When they, when they built other factories in other uh, water sources, other rivers, they had salt water and beer was very different. People did not like that beer. They said, this is terrible. It's funny, just uh, adding calcium makes the taste of beer much better. And now, in those factories, which were the, the old factories, which, which were built next to that lake, which contain hard water, they do not use that water anymore, and they add intentionally controlled amount of calcium sulfate, gypsum, to, uh, to the water that uh, they use, uh, tap water, just uh, uh, on the tap. They add some calcium sulfate to, to, to make it hard water, and then they, they, they make the uh, beer. Now also in wine factories, they use it, for two purposes, to make it clearer, to clarify the, the turbidity, because when you, uh, when you uh, take some grape juice and then use, uh, to try to make it uh, wine, so you use some yeast, of course yeast are, are, are bacteria, kind of uh, living creatures, let's say, and when they convert sugar to alcohol, they, they some side products form, side products are formed, and that creates turbidity. So it's very important for wine factories to, to, to produce or sell very clear wine. So in, in factories they use also to make the wine clearer, and also it, it helps to, to adjust the, the, the bitter taste of wine, so you can control the bitterness, sourness and bitterness. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, bitumen was known much uh, longer than, uh, earlier than uh, Sumerians. 
because it was always there. I mean, not everywhere in the world, but in many places in the world, there were some petroleum on the ground because, as you know, the petroleum is formed under the ground and after millions of years by pressure under the sediment, uh, sedimental rocks. But sometimes they leak out to the ground and then they slowly leak onto the surface and they make a small lake full of petroleum. So if you are lucky, if, you are, if your village is next to it, you use it. That's it. So there were many uh, small ponds of petroleum around the world. And the Neanderthals, about 40,000 years ago, they were taking that petroleum and using uh, in their caves. So in the caves, archaeologists found the remains of this uh, bitumen, asphalt or, or, or tar. And they were using it to, to adhere the, uh, uh, the, the wooden handle of stone tools. Of course, they wrapped it around the wood when they had the stone tool, let's say, and a wood handle. They wrapped it around it with, with some string. Then they used some bitumen to adhere it more strongly. They, they melted it and then uh, spread it around the, the, uh, the wood so that it would stay there stronger. And they found it in, in, uh, in uh, uh, a... Uh, cave called Gura Celi Cave in Romania. And then they found again in a, in a cave where the Neanderthal people used uh, bitumen in Um El Tilel in Syria, another cave. So we know that 40,000 years ago, 50,000 years ago, people had a chance to grab some uh, tar or bitumen and then use it for various purposes. Now, as I said, it was not difficult for, it's not all over the world, but because it's mostly under the ground. But we know that it is the most abundant, second most abundant uh, liquid on earth. Water is the most abundant liquid on earth, natural form and also bitumen, oh, sorry, the petroleum is the second one, second most, pop, most abundant one. You all know that petroleum is formed from the zooplankton, uh, plankton, that's high one, uh, plankton, and they were trapped under the sedimentary rocks, as I mentioned before. And after so much pressure and heat, after millions of years, they were converted because they, they didn't burn. They did not uh, disintegrate by bacteria under heat and under pressure. They are converted to another organic compound with very high number of carbon and hydrogen atoms. I mentioned that it, you could find it on the ground in small pits full of, uh, full of uh, petroleum. Now, when we get back to bitumen, as I mentioned before, after the uh, volatile compounds evaporated, you are left with the bitumen, and uh, the Neanderthals and all, all the other civilizations, they used that bitumen, uh, and the most important uh, discovery was to produce some boats made out of baskets in Iraq. They have circular baskets. They caught the entire surface, usually, in, in Tigris uh, River, uh, they used these uh, basket boats coated with, with bitumen. They are, they are just like small
So it's coated with bitumen. Now, they, they called it Kufa, or in Turkish Kufa. And uh, when we talk about this uh, Kufa, or the basket boat, uh, we always remember one of the stories from religious books about uh, the Moses, Hazrat Musa. Do you, do you remember his story? Anybody remembers his story? Why his mother put him on a basket and put him on, on the river? Do you know the story of the, the, the, the fights or story between Jewish people and, and, and Egyptian for us? Can you tell a story of what happens? Uh, Moses was like the adopted child of the... Uh, Princess in the, in the palace of the Fora. Yeah, huh? Fora. And then uh, after a while, uh, the Ramesses was the... Ramesses the second? Yeah, I believe. Was the middle, and <coughs> basically uh, they were contradicting each other when it comes to how to uh, rule the people of Egypt and the, uh, some of the people were following Moses and then... But which kind of people? Not normal Egyptians, yeah. but Jewish people, Jewish. yeah. <coughs> and then after a while, uh, Moses demanded the Pharaoh to let their people go away. They were like prisoners, yeah? And then basically the whole religious stuff happened. Sorry? Basically all the religious stuff happened. Okay, the yeah, stuff. okay. Plagues and et cetera. But there's a miracle. Fire. There's a miracle. You remember the miracle? Mujize hatırlayan var mı? Musa'nın mucizesi hani? Hmm? Bir yeri yardı. Red Sea. Hmm? Yeah, Red Sea. Yeah. When he, when he and the, his followers were escaping from the Fora and, and, and the soldiers of Fora, they came across the uh, Red Sea and all of a sudden the Red Sea opened up and then they walked onto the other side and then it closed down. But uh, uh, when, how about the relationship with bas Basket? You said that Moses was adopted child of the princess, but how did she adopt him? He was Jewish and, and uh, the princess is not Jewish. Well, actually, I, sorry. Uh, they are all Sami, Sami uh, people, Semitic people. Arabs and Jewish people were from the same origin. Just because of the religion, they, they were separated. Well, all I know is that uh, his mother, Moses' mother, uh, put baby Moses into a basket. basket and why, did he, she, why did she do that? Because? I don't know the reason, but I could guess that maybe like yeah, according to the religious books, for our order that every newborn son of Jewish people would be killed. So she wanted to protect her daughter and put him in a basket and put it onto the river and the basket landed next to the palace and then the sister of the Fora took him and then made him adopted as a son of her. Okay. Now, this Kufa, waterproof bitumen, uh, was also mentioned in some religious books. That's about uh, Noah and his ark, Hazrat Nuh, whom gave me ark. Ark is the big ship, it means big ship. And Nuh is another uh, priest, sorry, another uh, religious leader, prophet. Now, there are the story of Noah, the flood, big flood, big tufan, and, and, and the uh, uh, uh, boat of Noah. There are at least three, four stories about it. One in maybe in, in, in the Torah, the religious book of Jewish people, Tevrat, and another one is a clay tablet from Babylonians. Another one is Epic of Gilgamesh. So they are, they are all different from each other. 
especially the shape of the boat. But when we look at the carvings, this was the only kind of boat they used in Mesopotamia on the river, basket ones, you see. They are carrying some rocks, uh, rocks for construction. They are in the uh, uh, boat traveling, but there are some pe people around uh, the boat, some fishes and people around it. And uh, you see that whenever we see a carving, the boats are always circular uh, baskets. But we'll see the definitions and the replicas of these boats. Now, you see, this is the original photograph of a basket boat or kufa uh, in Iraq in 1918. So this is the tradition they had. Of course, after a while, they had this modern one, but you can see another basket here. Ordinary people used it, but if you want to have a big ship, of course, it was constructed according to the ships of the rest of the world. Now, they made baskets like this. Bildiğimiz pazardaki küfelerin yuvarlak büyük olanı. And then, after a, before they carried things, this is just the beginning of the construction, and then they caught it inside and outside with bitumen. You have the rows here. They traveled. But as I said, it's ordinary people. But it was the most common. Now, here we have another drawing of basket, basket uh, boat coated with bitumen. As you can see, they are carrying bricks or rocks for construction. See, just like the rocks or, or bitumen that we, so, sorry, the bricks that we use today. And, uh, but the thing is that you have see, you can see the uh, man, the fisherman, sitting on airbag made out of animal hide, floated animal hide. They are sitting on it just like they sit on a donkey or horse, but they are catching fish. They are fishermen. You see, the, the man on the, on the boat catches fish. So in all carvings, we never see a boat which is similar to our boats today. So Noah lived much longer than these people, much earlier than these people. Now, as I mentioned, there are three versions of uh, Noah's Ark. One of them is Sumerian Epic of uh, Zisudra. This is the oldest date uh, dated, it's uh, 1600 BC. So we know that Noah lived long before 1600 BC. We don't know the exact date, but roughly we, we, have, we can estimate. And the second one is Babylonian Epic of uh, Atrahasis. And the last one is Epic of Gilgamesh. The story, the idea is the same. Noah makes a ship and then there is a flood, too much rain, many, many, many days, 40 days, and then water goes up 15 meters high. So he, he, he and his families are saved, or some of the good people are saved, the rest, or, or rest were all killed. And, uh, but there are some uh, changes, important differences or changes in, in the details. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> now, uh, a clay tablet which mentions uh, the, the flood and Noah's ark says, Noah was a righteous man, düzgün, dürüst adamdı. Earth was corrupt, bütün ülke rez rezildi, kepazeydi, hırsızdı, arsızdı, ahlaksızdı. God instructed Noah to build an ark in which he and his sons, their wives, male and female, of all creatures, his family, relatives, and all a, a, a, a couple from each single living animal, any creature, male and female of all creatures, would be saved from the waters. Rain fell 40 days until the mountains covered 15 cubits, 15, one cubit is 52 centimeters if you recall, it varies, 49, 52, about seven and a half meters uh, uh, high, all life perished except Noah and those in his ark. After 150 days, water disappeared, ark rested or landed on the Mount Ararat. 
So this is one version. Now, this is uh, a clay tablet which gives the uh, Epic of Gilgamesh, but it's not the original, uh, uh, original uh, clay tablet where Epic of Gilgamesh was written on. In those days, many clay tablets were copied. After 50 years, 100 years, sometimes 400 years later, they copied that clay tablet. If it is an important clay tablet, they copied it and put it into their, their, their uh, libraries. Some of the kings, especially Asurbanipal, had a big library, the biggest library. If we didn't have that library, if we did not ex excavate and luckily find, uh, if we did not f find that uh, li library of uh, Asurbanipal, we wouldn't know these stories. I wouldn't lecture like this today because those clay tablets we wouldn't see. We would never know anything about these people. Well, anyway, so this is in Akkadian language. 700 BC, around 700 BC, or 650 or something. Of course, most of them are cracked, but at least we, get, we learn the details of the story from there. Now, as I mentioned, the design and the, the, the size of the ship varies in all those three stories. Size of circular uh, arc, According to Babylonian tablet, this one, it's 67 meters. The diameter is 67 meters. This is Noah's. And the height is about six meters. Sorry. And it has two stories, basements for the animals and upstairs for human beings. According to the book of Genesis, Gen uh, ul şey, uh, yaratılışın hikayesi olan birinci kitap Tevrat'ta. It is circular and it's like a, it's not circular, sorry, it's like a normal ship. So in Tevrat it's different than uh, the, the, the, the clay tablets of both. It's just normal ship. It, it, it's given as the length is 134 meters, the height is 22 meters, and the width is 13 meters. So we have a boat. The length is uh, 130 meters. Meter height is uh, 22 meters. Even the sizes are very different from each other. And the width is uh, 13 meters. Meters. So, Torah was written much later than those clay tablets. We don't know the exact date, but we can roughly estimate. So they are all different, but there is a story of Noah similar to in all of them. God was angry at the human beings. God could only trust Noah, and then he wanted to kill all the others except Noah and his, his relatives and families. So in, in all of them, now this is the replica of the boat with the size. Uh, they replicated in the Netherlands. Uh, it's 134 meters long. So you can see that. On the boat, there's, there's a big uh, container or, or, or, or, or housing for the human beings and the basement was for the animals. Now, the circular one is defined like this in the Babylonian tablet. It, it, it, it, they say that it's about length of six London buses. London buses, they are two-story London buses, iki katlı, Londra otobüsleri. So the, the, these are sep uh, isolated animals from each other because they, they eat each other, they kill each other. And then in upstairs, the human beings lived. But in all cases, they use bitumen. Now this is the replica of a basket boat of, of the Babylonian clay tablet, but it's, it's, it's, it's scaled down. Biraz küçültülmüş model. 
So according to this definition, people lived here and the animals in the bottom, you see two stories. Over here, the, the animals and then the, the, the human beings. This, is, was, this was made in India. Now, he is an important person who disappeared and translated the Babylonian clay tablet about Noah's Ark. He works in the museum, archaeologist, but he, he is, he's, a, he's actually a linguist. linguist. Uh, he, he can read and write Sumerian. So this is the clay tablet, original clay tablet, which is in, in, in, in London. Tabi onlar hepsi bizde olacaktı, hepsini götürdüler. Yoksa bunlar hepsi bizim Irak'ta bulundu. Okay, bizde olsa kırardık çoğunu. So he, t he translated this one and this defines the ship as a circular boat, basket boat coated with bitumen. There are various uh, clay tablets, as I mentioned before, where they use bitumen for various purposes. Since it's a waterproofing material, and also it is used as mortar, harch, for construction. Uh, so the, the king says, for protection, I built two massive walls of bitumen and bricks. This is Nebuchadnezzar. He, since his palace was by the river, if this is the palace, this is the river, of course there is always flooding uh, after too much rain. The, the river attacks the, uh, the walls of the palace, harms the gardens. So he wanted to protect the, the palace from the flood of the river. So he, he put some, he constructed a wall in front of the uh, palace to protect the palace from the flood. He says, uh, for protection of my palace from the flood, I built two, two massive walls of bitumen and bricks. So he used bricks and bitumen uh, as mortar. He had big, big walls to protect his, his uh, palace from the flood. So bitumen was used by the kings and also normal, uh, ordinary people everywhere. It was very common. You see, this is a Babylonian wall where the archaeologists proved that there are many walls like that, uh, that uh, in between the bricks or rocks, they mixed uh, molten bitumen and some sand uh, to adhere the uh, rocks or, or bricks to each other to make, and they still, those uh, walls still exist. The bitumen is there. So we, we are lucky that if you couldn't find these, we would never believe that they used bitumen for this and they, they, they mixed it. Now, the reason why do they mix bitumen and, and, and, and, and, and uh, sand? Why not use just bitumen? Why they put sand inside? We talked about it before. How do you call these kind of materials? bitumen plus sand. There is a name, general name for this mixture. How about today? What do we use when we make walls as a mortar? We have cement plus what? Cement plus? Öyle susman ya, biliyorsunuz hepsini yani, öyle susacak bir şey yok. <gülüyor> Bina yaparken kullandığımız harcın içinde ne var? Çimento başka? Yapmayın canım o kadar da. Hiç camdan bakarken bir inşa seyretmediniz mi yani? Türk milletinin en büyük merakı, adam oraya tahta duvar yapar, hepsi orada bir delik bulur, böyle seyreder. Neyi seyredecekse. Makine çalışıyor, adam duvar örüyor, seyrederler. Bilmiyorum hala yapıyorlar mı iş ama ben çocukken her gel, devamlı öyle yaparlar. Hatta delik de adamlar da gel, niye deliyorsun kardeşim duvarı diyor. İşte bakacağız abi diyor. Kırıyorlar, del, bakıyorlar. İnşaatı seyrediyorlar. Come on. 
ya konuştuk biz bunları. Hani şey gibi oldu. Televizyondaki dizi gibi konuştuk biz bunları. Anlattık biz bunları diye ya hocam. <gülüyor> yeah, send you send. What do we call these kind of mixtures? No, no, no, mixture. Cemento is, is cement. You buy cement. You, you, you add some water. You create a mixture of. You add some sand. Huh? When you pour it into a mold, it, it becomes concrete, beton. But there is a name for that, the, the mixture. Asphalt. Asphalt, no, asphalt bitume. These kind of materials we call composites. You remember composites? The idea is to mix two different or three different materials to create a stronger product. Right? So they knew that if you mix it with, with sand, the bitumen alone is, is soft and it, it, it, it, it maybe moves around. But if you have clay, it becomes much stronger. It, it becomes a composite. So Sumerians, we can say that the first civilization who invented composites, it's not us that we invented composites from fiberglass and polyester or nowadays carbon fibers and, and epoxy, right? Also, we use cement and sand and sometimes uh, also uh, some uh, lime when we make the walls, but when you make beton or, or, or concrete, we don't use any lime. Lime, cement and sand, we call harç, inşaat harcı, but when we use cement and, and, and, and uh, sand only, uh, we call it beton. Okay? And, but to make it composite, sand is not enough. We add something else. Beton or binalar. What else? You remember we said, what else we add? Denir. Yeah, we add iron. We have to have steel. When we, we want to make a column, you have steel, and then you pour in the cement, cement, uh, water. Uh, sand plus some no no lime. It becomes concrete. Duvarlarda çok önemli değil. Yani kireci kireçte faydalı oluyor ama beton armede kireç olursa dayanmaz. So there are many walls like found in in in Mesopotamia era, especially in Iraq, also some part of Syria, because. I mean, of course, in, in the past, many people think that we had uh, the names of the countries were the same. There was no country like Turkey, of course, Anatolia, but there was no country like Syria, not Iraq. So they had all different names, Germans, and they did not think about themselves as, as, a, as a citizens of Germany. People used to think of themselves as the citizens of an empire, Ottoman Empire, Seljuk Empire, or Roman Empire, right? So the differentiation and the drawing the, the, the borders of the countries was, it, it, it occurred much later, after the empires all broke out. Before that, we never said, I, I am German or Italian. You said, I am, I am Roman, I am uh, Osmanlı or Selçuki. So the, the reason I said that, the, the borders that we see today are, were not the same as before. There were many kingdoms in, the, in, in, in Mesopotamia, not only Sumerians, Babylonians, Akkadians, Assyrians, uh, Achaemenids, all around there. And uh, therefore, when you read history and then you, when you see these names, uh, don't think that they were the separate countries. Usually they were uh, city kingdoms. Then some of them became empires. You can see the beautiful uh, blue glazed bricks built in 575 BC. Again, during the time of uh, Babylonian King Nebuchadnezzar II. Nebuchadnezzar II. These are, uh, they were all under the control of Ottoman Empire many years ago. Right? Iraq was just the city of, of, of Ottoman Empire. But all of these things were stolen by the archaeologists in the past and taken into Germany. This, this is, this, you can see this in Germany, Berlin Museum. So many things were gone. As I said, 
Belki de gitmeleri iyi oldu çünkü her şeyin kafasını kırıyorduk, yüzünü kırıyorduk filan. O, o, o da ayrı bir problem yani gitmeleri iyi de olmuş olabilir. Size anlatmıştım yani. Alaca yüktü adam bana 50 metre, 60 metre ötedeki şeyden haberim yok diyor ya. Tarih eserden. Bilmiyorum abi ben diyor. Görse bile onu taş diye bakıyor. Hititlerden kalma büyük bir eser olarak düşünmüyor. Now this is again the carving of Nebuchadnezzar the second. Nebuchadnezzar? Yeah, Nebuchadnezzar. Now let's talk about the salt. Of course salt was always used by human beings during the history. Neanderthals and even people before them. Because it's an essential need for human beings and all living things, all animals. But uh, in history, we see that for the first time, mass production, you see, the people who found some salt in their villages or a village away, far away, they buy, they exchange, whatever, but they always consumed uh, salt. They had to add to their bread or food and also to the animals. You had to give some salt to the animals, otherwise animals would get sick. They knew that. But for, for the first time, we see that they started a mass production. In China, around 60,000, about 8,000 years ago, Chinese people were the first civilization who mass produced salt and exported it, used it and exported it. 